Hi, I'm Michelle, and these are my kids, Rhett, Luke, and Charlie. And today we're going to go over 10 simple steps that you can do with your family to get more prepared for an emergency. This is a great thing to do with your family one evening. You can sit down for about an hour or two, and you'll come out on the other side even more prepared. During a home emergency, it's important to have a place where your family can meet together so they can find each other, somewhere near your home. If you don't have a place set aside, this is what will happen. Kids, there's a fire! Run! Find this meeting place! Oh. <laughs> and that's what happens if you don't have a set place. Now that we know what not to do, let's do it the right way. Kids, there's a fire! Run! Now as parents, we can go over, we can find our kids, and we know everyone's safe. It's a good idea to have a list of out-of-state contacts that you can check in with if your family should get separated during an emergency. We have ours on these little cards that are inside each of our emergency kits, but it's also a good idea to program those into each of your phones and know what the contact is so that everyone knows who to contact. On a side note, sometimes in an emergency it's easier to get a text through than it is to get a phone call through. Everyone should know how to turn off the main power to their home. Every house has a box similar to this. Familiarize yourself with the box, know how it opens. Inside of the box is a main switch, and that should turn off your power, and then that way you're ready if you should need it. Make sure you know where your water main is located so that you can shut off the valve if necessary. In case of an earthquake or another type of disaster where you need to turn off your gas, it's important to know where your gas valve is located. Find that and then make sure you have a tool to do so. We're not going to do it today because if you do that then you need to call the gas company to come turn it back on. It's good to have a fire extinguisher in your house and know how to use it just in case someone lights a fire. It's important to have a minimum of three days of water for each member of your family. There's a lot of ways that you can store water. You can get bottles of water and just store those up, or you can get these containers. There's a lot of different containers you can get, and you can put water in those and have that stored up. But one of the more important things that you need to know is it's good to have a filter so that if your water becomes contaminated or you need to find secondary water, you're able to clean it so that you can drink it. Every member of your family needs to know how to use the filter, even the kids. It's important to have a minimum of two weeks of food stored for each member of your family. It's important to remember that you need to store things that store well, that prepare easily, and that your family enjoys eating. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Freeze-dried food is really good because it stores for a long time. It's easy to prepare and it comes in set meals. It's also good to prepare things that your family loves, kind of, you know, some favorite snacks and things. And uh, some other things you can do is you can store seeds so that you can grow your own food and you can preserve your own food. If you do that, everything put together will help you rest easy knowing that you're more prepared. As part of your emergency supplies, it's important to have a first aid kit so that you can treat any minor cuts, wounds, scrapes, whatever you need. Um, it's also important to have a hygiene kit that has just your basic soap and sanitizer, toothpaste, just the things that you need to keep you and your family clean. And then the other thing is really important to have your medication. Any medications that your family takes, it's important to have with you, and especially if they have special needs. This is Rhett's, and in his kit we have his inhaler, we have his EpiPen, we have his allergy medication, we've got everything that he needs so that we're prepared for any eventuality, even if there's a stray peanut. During an emergency, it's important to be able to cook without using utilities. Most of us have a barbecue grill, and these are great to use, but the important thing to remember is that you need to have fuel for your grill, so either propane or charcoal. There are a lot of other options too. You can use a sun oven, um, you can use a Dutch oven, and there are a lot of really fun small portable camp stoves that you can use. So it's important to have something on hand, and the most important thing is to know how to use it and to have the fuel that it needs. If something should happen to your home, it's important that you're able to make shelter outside of your home. This can be done easily by putting all of your camping gear in one central area that you can get to quickly. And this would be things just like sleeping bags, tents, blankets, flashlights, and this is going to vary depending on where you live and the climate that you live in. 
If you live in a hotter climate, of course, you're going to want to be thinking about shade and making shade for your family and staying cool. And if you live in a cold climate, you're going to think more about blankets and how you can keep your family warm. Doing this will make you more prepared when the time comes. In an emergency situation, it's a good idea to have some cash on hand. This cash can just be put into an envelope and placed in your emergency kit. During an emergency, a lot of times ATMs and banks aren't open, and so it's a good idea to have what you need with you. And a lot of times people don't have change, so it's important to have smaller bills so that you can purchase what you need when you need it. Most people don't think about this, but it's important to have a safe place for all of your important documents. These are things such as birth certificate, marriage certificates, insurance policies, banking information. It's important to have those in a safe place, and so to scan those and put them all on a USB drive like this is a really good idea. You can keep the USB drive in your emergency kit, you can keep them in a safety deposit box, or you can keep them with a trusted family member. But then that way, if any of your documents are destroyed in an emergency, you've always got a backup to fall back on.